So today we'll be discussing MCQs on sales of goods act. So the first question is goods means every kind of movable property, including goods means every kind of movable property, including options a actionable claim and currency money b old currency notes c goodwill and copyright and d both ac that is actionable claim currency money goodwill copyright so what are the things which are included in the definition of goods a actionable claim and currency money b old currency notes c goodwill and copyright and D, both AC, that is goodwill, copyright, actionable claim, and currency money. Please participate because there is no penalty of participating or giving a wrong answer. Fine? So it's better to always participate. If you also answer a not a correct answer, then you will get the correct answer after a few seconds. And here it is not the exam environment that you are that much tensed enough that you will not you will do mistakes, right? So better to do mistakes in here, this simulated platform, rather than doing over there, because there you will be penalized. Okay, I got the few answers. People are answering. So it should come in just fraction of seconds. I know you will get more time in there, around 120 minutes are there in your hands, but I would say that it's better to complete it as soon as possible. So it should come at, in within 10 seconds, the answer should come. And it is little easy only. So what are the things which are included in goods? Actionable claim, currency money, B currency notes, uh, old currency notes, C is goodwill copyright, D is both AC, that is goodwill, copyright, actionable claim, currency money. So I've got a few answers. People are basically responding between C and D. So those who are saying C, that is goodwill and copyright, they are correct. And why people are thinking that D will be the option? Because A and C, here in A, it is actionable claim and currency money. We had and the two things which are excluded in the goods are actionable claim and the legal tender that is money so obviously d is not the correct option c is the correct option so you can mark one those who have got the correct option that is c next question in case of an agreement to sell subsequent loss or destruction of the goods is the liability of whom in case of agreement to sell who will face the losses a the buyer b the seller c both buyer seller d insurance company quite an easy question so hopefully everyone are giving answer in just next one minute one second so in case of agreement to sell subsequent losses or destruction is the liability of whose one a is buyer b is seller c is both buyer seller d insurance company This is the most basic question. Whose liability in case of agreement to sell? Losses will be borne by whom? A, the buyer, B, the seller, C, both buyer, seller, D's insurance company. In case of agreement to sell, whose liability? Mostly people are correct, giving correct answer that is B, that is seller's liability. So answer is B now. Okay. Please respond as soon as possible. We have to discuss as much questions as we can. So I am taking on a higher side. Okay. X purchase, next question. X purchased papers from Y and sold them to Z, who found that the papers were infected by white ants. 
So he returned them to X. Can X return the goods to Y? Listen to the question carefully. There are two transactions happening. X purchased goods from Y and he resold to Z. Z found that there was some defect in the good, so he returned back to X. Can X return the goods to Y? Options A, no. B, yes. C, Z have to directly return it to Y. And D, none of these. Question was X purchased the papers from Y and he resold to Z. Z found that there was some defect infected, the papers were infected. So he returned back to X. Can X return same goods to Y? Answer is A is no, B is yes, C is X has to directly return to Y and D, none of these. Now one person is saying that X has to directly return to Y, the option C. How X and Y are related, I don't know. Sorry, Z has to directly return to Y. So why Z, are, Z and Y are related, I don't know. Because the first transaction is happening between X and Y, X the buyer, Y the seller. Next transaction is happening between X and Z. Z buyer, Y, uh, Z buyer, X seller. Fine. Now, Z and X has a relation. So Z has directly returned, uh, he has returned to X. He has done correct thing. Now the question was, can X return the goods to Y? So now what will be the correct answer? Most of them have given correct. They are confused between A and B, that is yes or no. Few are saying yes, another, another group is saying no. The correct answer is the people who are saying no, that is option A. So if you have marked option A, it's correct. How it is correct? Because the KV tempter shall be applicable. KV tempter implies that the quality of the goods or whether the goods are having any defects or not has to be seen before you purchase the goods. So before if X had taken the goods from Y, he didn't check the quality and fitness. Now why the seller will take it back? Whatever be Harsh Gupta ji, now your answer is wrong. Please improve your auditory skills. For the next question, all the best. Next question. In case of sale of standing trees. In case of sale of standing trees. The property passes to the buyer when? In case of sale of standing trees, the property passes to the buyer when? Options. A. Trees are felled and asserted. B. Trees are not felled but asserted. C. Trees are counted and asserted. D. Both B, C, that is trees are not felled, they are counted and ascertained. So in case of standing trees, when the ownership will pass to the buyer? A, the trees are felled and they are ascertained. B, trees are not felled, but they are ascertained. C, trees are counted, ascertained. D, trees are felled. The trees are not felled, counted and ascertained. So most of the people have responded and the answer is correct. Those who are saying option A, that is in case of standing trees, the trees will be felled first, they will be cut, means severed from the ground, and then they will be assert ascertaining that this much will be given to the buyer. So those who are saying A, they are correct. Next question, in case of higher purchase, the higher can, in case of higher purchase, the higher can, options, A, Pass the good title to the bona fide buyer. B. Cannot pass the good title to the bona fide buyer. C. Choose whether to pass or not to pass the title. And D. All of these. 
In case of higher purchase, what can the hire do? Can pass the good title to the bona fide purchaser. Cannot pass the good title. See whether to pass or not to pass. He will have a choice. And D, all of these. So those who are saying option B, that is he cannot pass the good title. What is the reason behind it? Can anyone tell me that why the hirer cannot pass the good title to the bona fide purchaser? The reason is that he himself is not the owner. In case of higher purchase, basically, he has taken the goods. Yes. Good, Rishav, good. Them correct. You have given the explanation that he is not the owner. So, obviously, he will not be able to pass the title. Owner is the vendor itself who has given the machine on hire. Now, moving to next question. A share certificate. Yes, Rishav, you are right that he just has the possession of it. And obviously, we know that the non-owners cannot pass the valid title. Right? Now, moving to the next question, the share certificate. A share certificate is a options, a document of title to goods. B, bill of exchange. C, document showing title to goods. And D, instrument of transfer. What is a share certificate? A share certificate is a document of title to goods. Bill of exchange, B. C, document showing title to goods. D, instrument of transfer. What is a share certificate? So I'm getting the correct answers. They are saying that document showing title to the goods. Option C is the correct answer. On the share certificate, you just have the name of the shareholder and the number of shares he is holding. Right? So it is answer correct answer is c that is it is a document showing the title to the goods goods are shares shares are movable property they are considered as goods don't get confused with a and c like i write because i have got the answers like document of title to goods and document showing title here it is document showing title next question in case of agreement to sell you have to determine what happens options a future sale of existing goods b future present sale of existing goods c future sale of future goods d present sale of future goods in case of agreement to sell what happens options a future sale of existing goods b present sale of existing goods. C. Future sale of future goods. D. Present sale of future goods. This question hits on basics. And if you can answer this question correctly, I hope everyone's basics are clear. Hopefully, people have seen the video on part one of Sales of Goods Act and their basics are clear. But whatever why I'm getting the answers, it's a little bit uh, opposite or contrary opinion I can form from that. In case of agreement to sell, few, uh, what happens? A, future sale of existing goods. B, present sale of existing goods. C, future sale of future goods. D, present sale of future goods. Now, what are the constituents or what which is the which kinds of goods are involved in case of agreement to sell can anybody tell me what forms the part of an agreement to sell which kinds of goods we have done the various types of goods so which kind of goods form part of agreement to sell obviously future goods then the option a is future sale of existing goods so those who are marking option A as a correct answer, now a reflection has come. Now another problem. So option A and option B already gone. From the elimination technique, we can just give them by. So now two options are there. 
future sale of future goods option c option d is present sale of future goods now again the basics what happens in case of agreement to sell the agreement happens today that is in a present date but the sale happens in the future and the goods are future goods so when are you signing the agreement today so it's a present sale so you will book sale also in the books of books of accounts presently right maybe you will get the doing the delivery of the goods manufacturing goods or whatever is done at the later get the price for the goods also later doesn't matter you will book the revenue for now in the accounts your revenue recognition principle also says that so now the correct answer is present sale of future goods so this way if we discuss the questions lot of i would say a confusions get solved so the next question option is d for the last question so i didn't find anyone answering option d don't worry it was little confusing i know next question it is very easy sales of goods act came into force on which date a january 1 1930 b july 1 1930 c april 1 1930 d september 1 1930 here just cramming is required hopefully people have learned the dates right it should not go wrong now here people are guessing here you can guess you have no negative marking from my side also and from your university side so it's less competitive than competitive exams sales of goods are came into force on which date a is january 1 1930 b is july 1 1930 c is april 1 1930 d is september 1 1930 most of the answers are correct yeah it's july 1 1930 option number b next question in a contract of sale the price may be fixed in the in case of contract of sale the price may be fixed by a options are fixed by the contract option b agreed to be fixed in a agreed manner determined by the course of dealings between the parties option c d all of these price is fixed by which techniques a fixed by the contract itself b agreed to be fixed in a agreed manner c determined by the course of dealings between the parties and d all of these this was a easy question we did it right so those who have properly seen the videos and attended the sessions they know it yeah and everyone are correct those who have answered it's d all of these are the techniques to determine the price okay now move to the next question a contracts to sell b oil to be produced from the groundnut harvested from a's farm the crops being harvested and oil was being made from the crops from groundnut a the seller fill the tins of oil supplied by b so the buyer is supplying the tins in which the oil will be filled in and seller did it seller has completed the task of filling the tins does the property transferred question is that does the property transfer to the buyer options a no the goods are not in a deliverable state b yes the goods are in a deliverable state c no b has not taken the delivery d none of these so oil was being filled in the can supplied by the buyer does the property passed to the buyer a no the goods are not in a deliverable state b yes the goods were in a deliverable state c is no b has not taken the delivery and d none of these now here also the basics 
and obviously the transfer of property chapter is little bit i would say more complicated than others so here what happens the appropriation need to be done appropriation is done by the seller yes and the consent of the buyer has been received the answer is yes after appropriation what is the next task to give it to the carrier who will take the goods to the buyer's place so is it mentioned over here that the goods have reached the buyer's place then we can say that yes the ownership has passed so the correct answer for this question is no the goods are not yet or ownership of goods has not yet transferred to the buyer because he has not yet taken the delivery or nothing has been told about the delivery thing because we need to first find out whether the goods are in a deliverable state answer is yes they are in a deliverable state appropriation done answer is yes and appropriation is correctly done consent of the buyer was received answer is yes we did the same case study when we were discussing this right so go through the video of chapter 3 again you will get to understand it more better right so first thing deliverable state answer is correct goods are in a deliverable state next question appropriation done yeah, and who has done it seller has done it and next question with the consent of the buyer yes buyer has given the cans so he has already given the consent so appropriation done and buyer's consent received but the next question right of disposal reserved or not we don't know about it because delivery is not yet done so ownership is not yet transferred so now i want the score cards so out of 10 how much you are scoring those who participated tell me and i think so the self evaluation people will do most honestly you are your own i would say evaluator okay i got the i am getting the numbers congratulations to everyone who is scoring more than 8 or 8 good muskan anusha rishav gurkreet has done 7 correct good why shanawas is just 5 need to improve an other audience when you will be participating <laughs> so i am expecting that others also participate next week right we have been doing we will be completing as many as questions will be discussing in upcoming sessions so now we'll rate the session so give your feedback at least the audience can also give the feedback apart from the participants okay the feedback is rating of the session on the scale of 1 to 5 Five is the most beneficial session, and the one is the least beneficial. So rate it. How do you feel that how how these sessions are beneficial? It's required because obviously in this way the more we can do or more planning can be done that how it can be improved. So the people who are the I would say the I, I am the seller that you are the buyer right of the service. which i am providing so i should also get the responses from my customers okay so people are rating the session as 4 on 5 okay good so if any improvements are required all constructive feedbacks are always welcome right next i would say that please be more prepared so we can have more interactive session so today if uh, if only only 10% or 20% people who are watching the session are able to answer the questions next day hopefully more than 50% answers and it's always good to answer because you will learn apart from you do mistakes is a part and parcel but still So I have shared the links. Those who have not given attendance can do the do so and other things like the channel and other links are also provided. So if you want to revise, it's the best place to go and revise there. 
so the next week you are more prepared to answer the questions right so all the video links are also being posted so you can go and access that and also do share your feedback in the comments section in the video so if any improvements are required or if any other help apart from this is required then also you can be provided so i would always say that if a help asked on time then it is better than if a help asked when the time has already passed right so hope to see you all you see all of you next day next week and we'll be meeting right and till then please keep revising at home and for any any feedback constructive feedback is always welcome right so you can give your feedback in the comments below fine thank you all for today thank you ma'am thank you ma'am